and a string of uh, uh. yesterday during a weekly news conference republican senator and minority leader mitch mcconnell froze up for about 20 seconds in the middle of his sentence so in this video i'm going to show you that clip i'm also going to get to how he responded afterward to some questions i'm also going to get to some history with mitch mcconnell and his health and also later on I'm going to show you the average age of uh, American politicians in Congress. I don't want to get people angry yet. I know my, my viewership is all over the place in terms of age. This isn't necessarily about the number, but it does bring a different perspective to lawmaking when you have people who grew up in a much different time than what is going on right now. So before I get to that, I want to show you this clip. Warning, I guess. This is maybe uncomfortable to watch, but he, you know, as far as we know, he's fine right now. He didn't suffer any serious health issue, apparently, at least as of recording this. But uh, here he is pausing in the middle of a sentence. This week has been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of... Uh, Do you want to say anything else to the press? Let's go back to you. Let's go ahead, John. So this is the, uh, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the IRA. Yeah, not good. Republicans that are so obsessed with Biden's age and his health may want to take a look at their own minority leader. Imagine if Joe Biden, during a speech or during a press conference, froze up for 20 seconds before being escorted away. That would be headline news on Fox, on Newsmax, on Daily Wire, and all these places for weeks. And to be fair, they'd have a good reason. <laughs> here you have this isn't just you know some <laughs> random politician this is the minority leader in the senate this is mitch mcconnell the man that has been leading the agenda for republicans for years so just take note at if there is any coverage of this at all on fox and other conservative networks because man just imagine if the shoe was on the other foot mitch mcconnell who's 81 has, I want you to guess in your, in your head right now, how long do you think he's been in the Senate? When do you think he was first elected? And I'm just talking Senate, not, not, you know, politician, not politics overall, just, just in the Senate. 1984. <laughs> he was first elected to the U.S. Senate before I was born. He has been in this position since 1984. And in fact, he uh, first served as a deputy U.S. assistant attorney general under President Ford in 1974. So he had a prominent political position in 1974 before becoming a U.S. senator in uh, 10 years later in 84. Look, this isn't this isn't just about age, though. Partially, it's about age. It's about the kind of perspective one brings when you are that old. I'm in my 30s, and I feel often disconnected from, <laughs> from Gen Z. Can you imagine being 81 and leading the Republican agenda? How can you possibly have any connection to reality, any connection to what society actually needs done? It is just wild to me what people will continue to accept. And this is separate from his health problems. Put, put those aside. 
just from perspective alone. Clearly, he's not connected. And I should be fair. I don't think it even matters in, 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 in terms of age in, in that sense, because we're talking about a party that exclusively responds to the needs of massive corporations. And then as a way to get votes, they drum up these culture war issues out of thin air. Issues that are just issues of human rights, like trans rights. It's, it's human rights. They turn into a culture war issue to get people out to vote for them. But with their actual agenda, apart from their terrible record on on those those cultural issues, is exclusively serving a corporate agenda when it comes to economic policy. Let me get to um, this next clip. So uh, this is Manu Raju, CNN reporter, who spoke with Mitch McConnell shortly after that episode and asked him what happened. And look at Mitch McConnell's response. Could you address what happened at the start of the press conference and was it related to your injury from earlier this year where you suffered a concussion? Is that no, I'm fine. You're fine? You're fully able to yeah. do your job? And... Mr. Lear, can I? Now, there was another situation a couple months ago when at the same weekly press conference that he has, uh, he couldn't hear reporters' questions uh, who were clearly audible. The questions were very audible. They were nearby. He had a difficult time hearing. All right. So I'm going to get to more on Mitch McConnell's recent health problems in a second here, in addition to what Manu Raju said there about him not being able to hear questions at a recent press conference. But in case you couldn't hear in that first clip, Mitch McConnell's response to a detailed question asking him, you know, what happened? Can you tell us some more details? All Mitch McConnell said was, quote unquote, I'm fine. That's it. Didn't offer anything. Complete lack of transparency. And for obvious reasons, he doesn't want to give any sort of information that could lead to potential political attacks on him and questions around, you know, sh can is he fit to serve and all this. So he's purposely, of course, not saying anything. But clearly there is more going on here. This isn't, you know, if Mitch McConnell was, I don't know, 40 years old and he, that same thing happened, I I think it'd be clear that it was some sort of anxiety thing, a panic attack, anxiety attack, and that's what likely led to that. That's happened before to other people on air in news networks. I've seen that happen and, and they've talked about it. But this is a separate issue because of all of Mitch McConnell's recent health issues that led up to this. So starting with this that came out, in the wake of uh, him freezing up. McConnell fell recently at a DC airport. So uh, NBC News here reporting, the fall which has not been previously reported occurred July 14th after the flight out of Washington was canceled while everyone was on board. McConnell, who was a passenger, had a face plant, quote unquote, Someone who was on the plane at the time but did not witness the fall told NBC News. The passenger also said they spoke to another passenger who helped tend to McConnell. McConnell has also recently been using a wheelchair as a precaution when he navigates crowded airports, said a source familiar with his practices. And also more on his recent health problems. He sustained a concussion and a cracked rib in a fall in Washington this year, and he spent six weeks away from the Senate. He fractured a shoulder in a fall in Kentucky in 2019, requiring surgery. Look, I, to me, the issue, the big issue with McConnell isn't necessarily these health problems, which you could argue is enough for someone to think about moving on. The issue for me is who he is as a politician and the terrible agenda he has pushed forward for his entire career. He got Trump those three Supreme Court picks. He... Uh, has been the leading voice for the Republican agenda for decades. So every terrible thing the Republican Party has done that they have accomplished, that has gotten through the Senate, has been through Mitch McConnell. Let me get to another clip. This is, uh, so you see what happened here in text, but I want to show you the video because it really shows, I think, a, a complete disrespect to not just the media, but also to society as a whole. Do you have anybody in mind to replace you when you're no longer the conference leader? <laughs> All right, so I think a lot of people watching this clip may not think much of this. They see, they may even think that 
this reporter is being rude by asking this question because Mitch McConnell just had this health problem and now you're asking him, you know, basically, when are you going to leave or who's replacing you? But you have to understand how we've all been conditioned to think that these are sort of, you know, celebrities. These are people that are untouchable. You have to be respectful. No, these are public servants. They are there to represent you. They should be taking a question like that seriously. They should be taking their responsibilities, their job seriously. This is not some random manager of a company or some CEO of a company. These are people that represent the interests of 300 million individuals. What society, how society functions, what happens with infrastructure, healthcare. To simply laugh off a question like this, I think to me it showcases just how much they don't care. And for them, it's all about their own power and their own positions. And how dare you even question that I may be replaced one day and that I should be thinking about that replacement. When I am here, this is my job, respect me. No, you should have respect for the people that you're supposed to be serving. I want to show you now just a quick clip here. This is um, uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who was also on CNN. Since I'm not a doctor, I allow a doctor here <laughs> to uh, give his assessment of the Mitch McConnell situation. And then I get to just how old Congress is. Um, if, if a relative yes. of yours, say, or a patient of yours exhibited such sy symptoms, you would recommend that, that they, see, they seek medical care or at least an assessment right away? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. time is, is critically important. Again, I don't want to overstate this, uh, you know, and be careful in terms of how we're pre presenting this, but, but I think that uh, there was clearly some sort of neurological uh, event that happened there. Whether it was just because of dehydration or medication or something like that, perhaps. But that was, again, 23 seconds mm. before he was asked if he was okay, 32 seconds before he left the lectern. I watched closely. Again, he was doing it of his own power, you know, so uh, you talk about that acronym. One of the things they're testing yes. for is strength. And it appeared that he had strength on both the right and left side of his body, but but a mini seizure, a, t a, a mini stroke, um, or, or again, something more common, whatever it is, that needs to be assessed. So I'm, I'm hoping that his staff is yeah. getting him to the hospital to get that checked out. So there you go. There's the doctor's assessment that he should go see a doctor to be assessed which I think is fair. <laughs> Obviously, Sanjay Gupta doesn't want to say too much as uh, just analyzing it from a, from a video. But clearly, Mitch McConnell uh, should be seeing a doctor, and I'm sure he has, and I'm sure he will tell us nothing. Now, quickly, just to show you, look, I covered Diane Feinstein as well when she, I mean, she's still going through her health problems. But um, this is from April, Feinstein facing calls to resign after missing dozens of votes due to illness. She had shingles, not to mention she's been suffering from what appears to be dementia for years. Others around her that have worked with her, other senators even, have blown the whistle on this. Yet, she's still there. Now, you could argue, well, she is retiring at the end of her term, but she's not leaving early. So, this is not a partisan issue. This is a bipartisan problem when it comes to people wanting to stay in their high power positions despite not being able to properly serve their constituents. Now quickly here, let's go through some stats because I'm, you know, it's I find this stuff interesting just to take a look at where people are uh, in terms of age in Congress. So the five oldest members of Congress here, Feinstein at 89, Chuck Grassley, who is another just Hilarious guy to watch. I mean, this guy, <laughs> Chuck Grassley, he had a, uh, his Twitter account. I, I, I'm not sure it's this way now, but I, I remember a few years ago, he would post just some random words and stuff to Twitter that didn't make any sense. So he, I don't know what's going on with him, but he's always a, a, a hoot to watch. Then you have uh, Grace, uh, Grace Napolitano at 86. So three House members here. Um, Grace... Uh, Bill Pascrell and Eleanor Holmes Norton at 85. And let's take a look at the detailed stats here. So, most represented age groups. The House is a little younger than the Senate, as you can see here. But uh, since we're folks in the Senate, we're talking about uh, the most, most senators, or I should say a, a uh, plurality, are 60 to 69 years old followed by 70 to 79, 
then 40 to 49, then 80 plus, then 30 to 39. If there's one thing wrong with this picture, and there, there, there are many you could argue, but I would say the fact that there are more 80 plus senators than 30 to 39 senators, that's a real problem. To have, to be, you know, one of a hundred people who are dictating the future of society to not be alive to see that future, I think is just wrong. Regardless of their positions, you know, Bernie falls under that list. I believe he's 80 now, maybe 79. I don't know. He's, he's near there, but he's look, he's the exception to the rule. He's the one person, <laughs> the one Senator that really is connected to society that, that really does understand what is happening, does have a proper critique of, uh, of capitalism versus, you know, the working class and what's going on there. So he, he, to me, he's the outlier. And you could argue, to be fair, that there are people who are younger. I mean, if, you're, if you become a senator in your 30s, you probably have some connections to big money donors. You probably uh, put forward some ideas that let you get ahead that early in life because of the groups around you that support that. And often those are corporate groups. So... You know, it, again, I want to be clear. It's not simply about age. But I do think that the society you are building, I mean, hopefully <laughs> you, you're going to be alive. You're going to be around to be involved in the society that you're helping to shape. Because when you're, you know, getting up there in years, you have, I believe, a less of a connection to that. And just to point out here, the average age of a senator is... Uh, 64. Now, these are the generations. So baby boomer is much too high here at 65%, followed by Gen X, then the silent generation, and then millennials. And there's only one member of Gen Z, I believe, in Congress, and that is Maxwell Frost. So that's at 0.2%. And uh, per party, Republicans are a couple years younger than Democrats. And independents sit at 68. This is a very sensitive topic. Because when it comes to age, it's not clear cut. As I said, Bernie Sanders, fantastic politician. And he's one of the older members of the Senate. That said, I don't know. Whether it's... For me, it's less about the health problems. It's more about the perspective and what perspective you're bringing to Congress. And when you're someone who clearly is very disconnected from the rest of the country, and you could argue that is the majority of Congress, but it's, I would love it if people that were 80 plus were really concerned about the climate crisis, but I feel like most of them just aren't for obvious reasons. They're not going to be around for the worst of it. So you see that represented in the total lack of uh, urgency around that issue. But even when it comes to things like healthcare, when they themselves and people they know are well-connected, are on Medicaid, or on Medicare, I should say, uh, it's just a different experience than people who are struggling, who are young. Healthcare is incredibly expensive when it's on private insurance compared to a country like mine, where it's guaranteed to you that allows me to do the things that I want to do, like start a new venture, do this job that I'm doing right now without worrying about losing healthcare. So there is just a, a whole slew of issues that is very different when you are of a certain age compared to, you know, uh, someone younger coming in. But to me, this Mitch McConnell story is just a reminder of how disconnected many of these people are.